Uh, balance is an important issue because as people get older, the balance gets poorer. And if they fall and break a hip, that's got a poor prognosis. I've experimented a little bit and found just, try, I mean, trying to stand on one leg to see how, what the balance is. I found just by walking on a straight line, just for about three minutes, the balance improves markedly. So uh, what suggestions do you have for improving our balance? For one thing, your suggestion is wonderful. And I can completely agree with you. The other one is to walk backwards. And again, you, you move your whole body to the side to see that it's all empty there, like for example on the beach or in grass or in your corridor, and then you move your head to the other side. That also helps your balance, by the way. And then walking backwards. Another one is uh, to sit and to grab one leg and lift it up, to grab the other leg and lift it up, to grab both and lift it up and down. Another one, what I would do with you, Linda, is have you walk on my trampoline. Because if you walk on a long, on a big trampoline, I probably first would hold your hand and then let you walk yourself forwards and backwards. You may find that the give of the trampoline really helps you uh, to start and find your balance uh, when you are uh, on earth. And also walking in the beach or walking on grass is fantastic because you strengthen the calf muscles. And so anything can strengthen the calf muscles. If the audience stands at home and lift their toes up and down while the heel are on the ground, they can sense real tension in their shin muscles or we call them tibialis anterior. So you, you, you strengthen the muscle there, and then you have balance in your calves and in your shins, and uh, that balance strengthens you. I work on many people with great balance problems, like with multiple sclerosis, and I learned that strengthening uh, calf and shin muscles is one of the main ways to get them to be balanced. Yeah, I'm in my, in my experiments. I'm kind of surmising that it's you know, like you say, walking on a trampoline. It's when your body is practicing trying to restabilize, and you're shaking back and forth and trying to balance it. I I suspect that that's the process that helps improve the nervous system and the communication. Is that correct? Absolutely, absolutely. We need to not always stay in our comfort zone but to stretch it a bit, you know. So, of course, if you have balance problem, the last place you want to be in is a trampoline where the balance is being challenged. But then once you're able to manage the trampoline, when you go on earth, it feels so light and easy, right? Uh, if you walk on the sand, uh, you strengthen your calves, and that really affects your balance. If you sit and lift one leg and you have to stay in balance and not fall on your back when you sit, that really helps. If you lift both legs, holding your toes uh, or, or your legs, depends, depends on your body, of course, what you can do with it. That really affects your balance big time. And, of course, one of the things that I do with people who have very, very poor balance is take them to the pool where they can walk forwards and backwards and walk sideways, and they can, um, uh, they can fall in the water. Nothing happens if they do. And that really is a good way for them to start and feel more confident in the legs. So then out of the pool, we slowly, slowly can do exercises. And you couldn't say enough how important balance is, because once you reach your 70s, you really are at risk of falling and having a lot of problems. And that, that has to stop, and that has to stop to your early hundreds. You want to have good balance. How do you improve blood pressure? So uh, two kinds of um, problems that we have. You know, one is low blood pressure. Some people faint all of a sudden. They have low blood pressure. Uh, uh, and people will hate me for that advice, but especially in the summer, maybe you'll be okay with that. Take two or three cold showers a day, uh, and um, uh, that will increase the work of the heart and will get your pressure to be better. And, of course, do the normal thing I'm talking about, 
loosening up the hips, loosening up the shoulders, uh, moving them evenly in rotating motion. With high blood pressure, that one out of eight people, listen to this, a billion people, yeah, four times the amount of all the people who listen to Voice of America with all of its programs, right? a billion people have a high blood pressure. It is silent. We don't know that we have it. So a few important things for us to, to do. Number one is dance. And dance in a very smart way. Lift your right arm with the left leg. Lift your left leg with, uh, with the uh, right arm. Lift your um, uh, right leg with your left arm. Up and down very quickly. You can stand against the wall and lift them up. Listen to some nice uh, rhythmical music as you do that uh, and do it for a good four minutes two or three times a day so that's the first thing that you do the second thing that is important for you to do is to make sure that you know when your blood flows well or not if you feel stiffer than normal that means your blood doesn't flow well today so do some things to loosen yourself up if you feel fatigue it means the blood doesn't flow well and sometimes rest for 10 minutes and even sleeping for a minute or two in the middle of the day is a helpful thing for your blood pressure at that moment. Uh, also, exercising is so good for you. Running, uh, jumping, walking. Walking also always reduces the blood pressure. You increase it as you walk, but it gets reduced when you're in a rest, resting uh, uh, time. Uh, making sure that your digestion is good, that your secretion is good. That helps the blood pressure a lot. Um, working on clarity of thoughts is very helpful to blood pressure. Not being engaged with a lot of thoughts that cause you worries and makes you feel very uncomfortable. That is so important for you to, to have a comfortable thoughts working on having comfortable thoughts and trying to um, stay away from uh, people who bring toxicity to your life. That's a very important thing, but building very good relationship with others. All that affects your blood pressure. So remember, warm hands and feet by loosening the shoulders and hip joints. And it's all in my book, Awakening Your Power of Self-Healing, and in my workshops. Uh, rubbing your feet, rubbing your hands to warm them up, um, massaging your face to make sure that the face gets enough circulation, massaging your, your uh, head, and also massaging your body is a fantastic thing for your blood pressure. And then uh, making sure that you're never too tired in the middle of the day, take a break, rest and making sure that you exercise. I believe the best time to exercise is the morning, before breakfast even, you know, uh, to do exercises at least for half an hour uh, in the morning. Um, for example, me and my partner, before this show, we made sure that we had a nice walk uh, in the woods and loosen ourselves up. So then I would be focused and concentrated in this show. So... Walking, loosening, relaxing, and clearing your thoughts. That's the way to help blood pressure. Otherwise, medication can really kill you. Yeah, magnesium, I understand, can help. So tell us a little bit about your school for self-healing. Well, I formed the school because I have a very unique way of teaching. And we teach workshops for the public, like the Labor Day weekend which is coming for three days and people come from all over the world for that we teach also um, a six-day eye class which many people like very much we teach also an extensive class for the eyes which includes learning the structure and the function of the eye and becoming a coach to other people who want to work on their vision and then doing training courses i'll have a 12-day training course around april or may of next year, uh, then uh, I teach people by apprenticing with me and learning to work with other people. And uh, so it is, uh, our school is there to help people to know 
uh, in practical ways how to improve the vision, how to reduce double vision or eliminate it, how to prevent cataracts from expanding and controlling it, how to prevent glaucoma from destroying your optic nerve by getting more circulation to your optic nerve and reducing the pressure with our work. So we do so many wonderful things for so many people who come to to us from every corner in the world to be helped. And I also travel to many corners of the world. Yeah, I I suspect that some of this information, some videos are on your website, but there are also, you can find some of them on Silicon Valley Health Institute website. That's S V is in Victor H I. So you can find some of his presentations there. So we've got three minutes left. So what's your vision about self healing? You know, how do we tap the great potential that we possess so that we can go toward optimal wellness and let people know how they can get a hold of you? You know, it's interesting that in the past we saw that medication can fix everything. Surgery mm-hmm. can fix everything. But even the medical profession got to the understanding that you need to work on yourself to make things better. What they don't know is how to do it. That's what we teach. How to use the muscles you never used before so you can integrate between them and the muscles we always use. My vision is to influence the world enough that in the whole world of rehabilitation, they will adopt self-healing as the first approach they give to a person. So when you go to an optometrist, he or she would give you eye exercises as an alternative to glasses. And you will only wear glasses if that part failed. Then if you go to a physiotherapist before pushing a wheelchair on you or a cane, you will extensively get hours and hours of training to strengthen yourself. And before you go to the gym, you will learn about all the possibilities your body has so you will either have gyms with more possibilities or you will compensate for whatever gym taught you, whatever uh, yoga places taught you. So the idea is to build up kinesthetic, deep awareness of your needs. It will prolong your life and make the quality of your life so much better. I really hope to get to every home in the world, to every man, woman, and child, and teach them from young age. And that's what I'm doing in my back book, Taking Back Your Back, I'm trying to teach people from young age what they should do with themselves. So my vision is expansion. I'm so grateful to you, uh, Linda, uh, uh, Susan Down, uh, for, for interviewing me and for giving me the platform in the Silicon Valley uh, to speak with. It's, uh, there are wonderful people there, and you're, you've been doing wonderful work for years. So, Susan, uh, I hope that People will come to the different seminars we have. We have one on August 8th. And um, I hope that you will get my, uh, my workshops online. But the main thing is I hope to see you one way or another in your hometown or in San Francisco. And you can contact us by calling us at 415-665-9574 or 415 Six six five nine five seven four zero zero one. If you're from abroad, four one five six six five nine five seven four or www.self-healing.org. Best is to write to office manager at self-healing.org. Tell about your concern. We'll, we will uh, exchange letters, and you'll see if you can come and work with us. 